Welcome to the Springfield Township Board of Trustees meeting. It is December 11th, 2018. Um, Mr. Burning, may we please have the roll call? Yes, Mr. Harnlaw. Mr. Burning? Present. Ms. McFarland? Present. Mr. Harnlaw? Present. All the trustees are present. And next, if I could ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. First thing that we have this evening is approval of minutes from our regular session on November 13th, 2018, a special meeting for the road project equalization hearing, which occurred on November 19th, 2018, and our regular work session held on November 27th, 2018. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes as drafted? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, uh, Mr. Burning, do we have a uh, fiscal officer's report? Yes, Mr. Honolulu. Um, for the month ending November 30th, 2018, the township expenditures were $3,399,165.49 with receipts of $777,165.75. The ending cash balance of $20,344,825.44 includes obligations for expenditures, payroll, regular operating costs, ongoing capital <coughs> improvement projects, and investments. What I request is a motion to approve the receipts, warrants, payroll expenditures, update, and current revenue and reports for the period ending November 30th, 2018. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, the fine, and I just want everyone to know financial reports are available for viewing at the administration offices weekdays during regular business hours or, or, or on our website 24-7. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burning. Next, uh, moving on to departmental action and discussion items. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, do we have the uh, township administrator's report? We do. Thank you, Mr. Hernalal. This evening, we just have a few action items and a, and just a couple discussion items. First action item we have are our annual canine agreements that we have with our two canine officers uh, in the police department, which is uh, Jim Sheeler and Dan Carter. These are our standard agreements that we approve on an annual basis. And uh, unless there are any questions, I would just entertain a motion to authorize the administrator to enter into that agreement with our respective uh, canine officers. I do have one question. How is Ranger doing? Is he, is he going to retire? I would defer that question to Chief Browder. Actually, just recently, in the last few weeks, Ranger went to the vet, and they said for a German Shepherd that's a, actually a, a law enforcement dog that he's in extraordinary shape. So Dan is going to continue uh, as long as he can to, to, uh, to operate Ranger, and he's still doing a great job every day. Good for him. And, and obviously, Paco is still his all-star self, I'm assuming. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good. Do, Do we have a motion? Yeah, just a motion to approve. I'm oh, sorry. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. The I next. Didn't mean to cut you. No, off. no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. I, I wanted to clarify that that agreement is not authorizing me to do it, but it's, it's authorizing just entering to that agreement with our canine. The trustees actually signed that agreement, not the administrator. Correct. The. Next item is to set the date and time for the zoning resolution text amendment hearing. I know we discussed that previously, and, and I think the proposed date was January 15th at 5.30 p.m. And as the board is, is aware and remembers, that is the various text amendments we are making to the zoning code. So if that date is acceptable to everyone, I would uh, entertain a motion to set that date and time for the text amendment hearing. So that, moved. That will work for me. What about you, Jeff? I think it will. Think the 530, should. wasn't it? Yes. 5 or 530? 530. 530 on the 15th of January. Right, the 15th. Do we have a second? I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. The next is we have a liquor uh, permit request for <coughs> R&J Productions, uh, DBA Country Fresh Market and Wine Depot. Chief, I'm assuming that there's no issues with this. It's just a transfer. No, it's a transfer of ownership. No issues. Do we have a um, 
motion to direct our fiscal officer to send the appropriate uh, correspondence to the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> The next item we have is just prior to this meeting, we had our bid opening for our two skip projects that to be completed in 2019, which are Brentwood Village and Glen Forest. We had five bidders. The engineer's estimate is 1.17 million, uh, roughly. The winning bidder was, Pru or low bidder, was Proust Construction at $1,019,359. dollars i would ask that the board authorize and uh, award the, the bid pending final league review uh, to Proust Construction for the Glen Forest and Brentwood Village resurfacing projects in the amount of $1,019,359. So moved. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So it's roughly 150,000 under what the estimate was, which yeah, is always a good thing. That's a, that's a sizable amount. And, um, we've had good luck with Proust. Mm -hmm. yeah, they've yeah, they've, they've always done a good job for us. Too. Okay, very good. The next action item I have is, as I've discussed with, with the board, there is a nonprofit agency within the greater Cincinnati region that is responsible for marketing and providing technical assistance to residents and businesses in the greater Cincinnati region regarding energy efficiency projects. The agency was started, I think, because they received a grant that allowed them to provide technical assistance. And in this particular case, they're asking to partner with local jurisdictions to cross-promote the agency's, I guess, responsibilities, which is to uh, provide residents with an opportunity to do energy assessments of their home. It's an online or a web-based or app-based product that residents can use. Based on the results of that, that energy audit, they can then contact the Greater Cincinnati Energy Alliance and they will provide them with some technical assistance as to how to make improvements to their home or their business or their whatever facility that they did the audit with that would reduce their, their consumption of energy and, and then lessen the cost to, to uh, provide or heat or cool or provide electric to that facility. They also have recommended vendors that they use for energy efficiency project projects, whether that be windows, solar panels, uh, electrical upgrades, HVAC projects, whatever that may be. They have vendors that they would recommend to those individuals interested as well. So, again, they're they're asking to enter, enter into a, a memorandum of understanding with the township. Other townships have already done this, as well as municipalities, Delhi, Sims, Sycamore, City of Cincinnati, Colerain, Evendale, other, I think Glendale recently did it as well. So all it, all it, really, all it really requires us to do is help them promote their, their mission and their responsibilities out into our community and provide our residents with a, a, a no-cost uh, opportunity to do an energy audit uh, of their particular home or facility. So pretty pretty standard uh, MOU. I know Ms. Abrams has, has glanced at it, but if the board is so willing to enter into this MOU, I would ask that a, a motion uh, to authorize the administrator to enter into this MOU with the Greater Cincinnati Energy Alliance pending final legal review and any revisions that, that our law director may deem necessary. I have a couple of questions. Yes. You know, uh, first of all, how do they contact the homeowner and you know there are so many scams that are going on you know in this universe right so and then how would the homeowner know that they are that they are really uh, serious and that they've been supported and endorsed by we in the township uh, how, how do they make that initial contact generally the contact is going to be done and, and why they ask for the MOU with us is they want to utilize our already existing communication channels with our residents to promote their activities and the ability for our residents now to contact them because they've entered into that partnership with the township. So, so they, they would do that through our website? Partially. Okay. And, and then additionally, how they would know it's legitimate is that through their marketing materials, they would indicate that Springfield Township is a partner of those, along, along with the other entities that I've already named, which is just a few of many. 
that have already partnered with, with the Inter Greater Cincinnati Energy Alliance. Mm -hmm. So that's how it would be done. Okay. So do they, do the individuals that are marketing this product, do they have to come here to, um, to, to be reg registered or anything, or they just go straight into the community? Well, again, this is a nonprofit right. entity that we're talking about, and they're not going to go out and knock on doors or pass out leaflets, from what I understand. Okay. It's, it's purely going to be... Or call people. Or, or call people. It's, it's, we're going to market the availability of our residents to utilize them. Okay. Then it's going to be on, it's going to be the responsibility of our residents, if they're interested, okay. to contact the Greater okay. Cincinnati Energy Alliance. Okay. Okay. All so, right. And then I, I would say it, it probably makes sense that I, I asked the representative of the Greater Cincinnati Energy Alliance to come to maybe our next meeting and, and further explain and, and maybe provide some additional information to our residents as to, because of the action we're taking tonight, now what's available to our residents okay. uh, through the Energy Alliance. Good. I think that okay. would be good. Okay, those were just some of the questions. No, good question. I had the similar concerns prior to meeting with them. The, the agreement, Gwen, says we're gonna allow marketing and promotional materials to be advertised or distributed at township events, install hyperlinks on our website or on their website to uh, our website uh, allow them to use our logo mm -hmm. on their social media right. and reasonable access to township facilities for the purpose of conducting public workshops informational educational sessions right. it's, it's it's essentially providing a a, a no-cost option uh, to our residents mm -hmm. for things that the, the private sector would do at a cost the energy alliance because of their nonprofit status and, and how they're funded is able to provide this at no cost to residents in, in the Hamilton County region. Okay, that answers some of my questions. And I'll, if I have, I'll meet when they when they come next month. If I have any other questions, I'll ask them first. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So again, if the board is is so inclined, I would entertain a motion to authorize the administrator to enter into the memorandum of understanding with the Greater Cincinnati Energy Alliance. Do we have a, a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Let me say I second with the understanding that they're going to be here at our meeting next month. I will do my best to get them here. Okay, thank you. The, the last action item I have is the, to set the holiday hours at the Community Arts Center in the Grove. It's my understanding that our Community Center Director wants to have the, the center closed from Monday, December 24th through Tuesday, January 1st. And that's generally our slowest time and allows him and his uh, assistant back there to get a lot of things done while the center's closed. So it's a, it's a good time of the year to, to shut things down and, and get ready for the new year. So Do we it, have a motion? So, so moved. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Discussion items. One item I, I just wanted to announce is that I received notice from Duke Energy that they will be lowering residents' gas transmission rates by a whopping 22 cents a month. So it's a good time of year, obviously, the Christmas season, and save a little money, but 22 cents a month is, is what residents will be seeing as a savings in their gas distribution rates. And I bring it up only because there's generally a lot of confusion as to who's responsible for gas transmission if you're part of the township segregation program. It is still Duke Energy. Whether you're in the township program or not, you still pay the same distribution rates as somebody who's not in the program. So I just, it's, I, I use this as an opportunity just to remind everyone that if you have issues with your, either your electric distribution or gas distribution, you still call Duke. Even if you're in the township program, they're still responsible for fixing any issues, getting the electric or gas to your house. So. Still give them a call if you have any issues with your service. But other than that, I don't think the 22 cents is going to be burning many holes in many pockets. <laughs> but in any event, I guess it's better than... Better than raising a 22. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Every little bit helps. Right. The next uh, discussion item I have is the Hamilton County Multi-Hazard Mitigation Plan. There is a resolution later on the agenda that would basically allow us to enter into that agreement with the count Hamilton County EMA regarding the multi-hazard mitigation plan, which is something we've participated in for years, but they just recently did an update. And I know Chief Leininger, you and I, I believe um, Randy Miller were involved in, in that update process. So I don't know if you have any comments regarding that before we get to that resolution later in the agenda. A little bit of what it is. Yeah, please do. Uh, it's 
2018 multi-hazard mitigation plan is actually required under the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000 and must be updated every five years. The last one that we did was in 2013. Plan development was a collaboration between the Hamilton County Emergency Management Agency, Homeland Security, and local governments. Uh, Lieutenant Randy Miller and myself represented Springfield Township. Historical data on natural disasters such as flash flooding, tornadoes, mudslides, severe storms, and high winds was collected for each jurisdiction and then analyzed. The mitigation plan team uh, developed strategies to reduce the risks. Adopting the plan makes Springfield Township eligible for FEMA dollars to help facilitate the mitigation. Uh, to, know, to learn more about the plan and review the document, um, our viewers can go to Hamilton County, Ohio, EMA.org, and the plan is, is accessible through that website. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. as, as, as I like the part where it helps us and enhances us with our FEMA mm -hmm. program. That's, that's an asset right there. Absolutely it is. It, you know, I remember you know, the, the windstorm years ago. I think because of our eligibility to receive FEMA funds, it was almost a half million dollars in reimbursements we received from FEMA during that storm, mm -hmm. which is a huge help mm -hmm. because that was very costly to not only Springfield Township, but a lot of communities. And it was, to be able to receive those FEMA funds was, was very important. Personal update is very short this month. We had no resignations and, and no hires, so I, I, Mr. Mullins does not have a report for me to read this month. And then you do have a, a copy of uh, the Community Events and Programs Report as well as any departmental activity reports. So if there's no questions of those, that does conclude my, my report. I would offer an apology in advance for the number of resolutions, especially the assessment resolutions and whoever has to read those, but. I, I do apologize for the lengthy uh, nope. titles in those resolutions. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Next, moving on to our resolutions this evening. The first resolution we have is resolution number 106, 2018, authorizing the sale by internet auction of vehicles forfeited to Springfield Township pursuant to section 2981.05 of the Ohio Revised Code which are no longer needed for public use, are obsolete or unfit for use in the department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burning. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Honolow. Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number 107, 2018, authorizing the private sale of junk motor vehicles, which were titled to the township pursuant to revised code section 4513.61, and revised code section 4513.62 and which are not needed or unfit for use in any township department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burning. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Honolow. Aye. Resolution carries. Next we have resolution number uh, 108, 2018 authorizing the sale by auction of junk vehicles which were titled to the township pursuant to sections 4513.61 and 4513.62 of the Ohio Revised Code, which are no longer needed for public use, are obsolete or unfit for use in any township department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burning. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Honolow. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 109, 2018, declaring nuisances pursuant to Ohio Revised Code section 505.87 at various listed properties within Springfield Township and authorizing statutory actions necessary to abate the nuisances. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burning. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Honolow. Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number 110, 2018, adopting the multi-hazard mitigation plan. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burning. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Ms. Har Mr. Harnelow. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, resolution number 111, 2018, declaring motor vehicles located on public or private property in Springfield Township, Hamilton County, Ohio, 
to be junk motor vehicles pursuant to revised code 505.173 in ordering the removal of such vehicles pursuant to resolution number 82012 and revised code 505.871. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Honolaw. Aye. Resolution carries. Next resolution number 112, 2018, adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvement to Meredith Drive, Rockport Drive, Sherborne Drive, Newcastle Drive, and Westbury Drive in approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvement proceed. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Honolaw? Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number uh, 113, 2018, adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvement to DeSoto Drive and approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvement proceed. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Honolaw. Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number um, 114, 2018, adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvements to Timber Trail, Sherbrooke Drive, and Green Fringe Lane in approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvement proceed. Springbrook. Springbrook Drive. What did I say? Sherborne. I'm sorry. Um, let the record reflect Springbrook Drive. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Arnolo? Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number 115, 2018, adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvement to Green Pine Drive, Spring Beauty Drive, Thistle Court, and Persimmon Court in approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvements proceed. So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Honolaw? Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number uh, 116, 2018, adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvement to Cedar Creek Drive, Canfield Court, and Cedar Brook Court in approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvement proceed. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Harnelaw? Aye. The resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number uh, 117, 2018, adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvement to Spring Run Drive, Mill Spring Court, Farm Hill Court, and Mill Farm Court in approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvement proceed. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Honolaw? Aye. Resolution carries. And finally, we have resolution number uh, 118, 2018, adopting the estimates and specifications reported by the county engineer for improvement to Beach Drive from Meadowcrest to the cul-de-sac, North Meadowcrest Circle, Heatherdale Lane, and Thornberry Drive in approving and confirming the assessments for such improvement and ordering that the improvement proceed. Do we have a motion? So moved. moved. Seconded. <laughs> Mr. Burney? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Honolaw? Aye. Resolution carries. If I may, the, the title of these resolutions is somewhat misleading and, and it's only because the higher advice code mandates such language, but at the end of each resolution, it, it indicated that ordering that the improvement proceed. I think as the board is aware, these projects are done. And I think it's, it's a little confusing. I thought it was important to point that out, that the projects are done and it's worded this way only because of the higher advice code. However, 
we weren't going to pass a resolution and, and assess the properties until the project's done. So it's sort of a chicken and the egg thing, right? So while the language indicates that or ordering that the improvement proceed, I think it's important to note that these projects are already completed. And at this point, we're now passing these resolutions so we can place the assessment on the tax duplicate to the county auditor for these improvements. So Correct. Really and that was the that. that was the purpose of our meeting back on November 19th. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. It's just right. it's somewhat it's it's odd that that the language says it for it to proceed when in fact it's already well, I mean, it's, we, we can we can enact these as soon as we uh, do the equalization hearing. So we can't enact them and do the assessments then. We just right. have chosen not to do that. We just want people to see that they're actually going to get the work done prior to and we did promise the, we promised the residents that also yes, that they right. wouldn't be assessed yeah. until after the work. Exactly. And, that's, exactly. and that's just a decision on the board's part. That's not. That's why the language is a little at odds at what the revised right. code does, because the revised code anticipates that you'll do the equalization hearing, then you'll pass this resolution, and then you will do the, the work. But because this is a, a novel approach to, mm -hmm. to doing this, and, and our residents are trusting us that when they agree to this, we're going to do the work. We've made that promise to them. That's why we're doing it. So right. that's why the language is a little bit odd. It's not that we're Absolutely. messing it up. It's just we've made a different promise to our residents. And that's how it's been exactly. Right. I think, and I just want to thank our law director for going deeper in her explanation and clarifying those points a little better. Uh, because this is a fine job. <laughs> we, we, we wanted to. We just want to make sure that we're not that no one interprets that as we're doing mm -hmm. something inappropriate. We're just holding those off. Do we have any old business before the board? Do not. Uh, anything under new business? I have one thing, uh, and I would be remiss. I cannot not uh, just thank all of our departments for the great job they did in this recent ice storm that we had. All of our departments were right there to keep our streets clean, safe, and our residents is safe as well. And especially to the service department, as I'm looking at the activity reports, it appears, you know, when you guys got out there and started, we set up, we set out a, a information that we were going to collect the brush. I cannot tell you how many residents have just been so thankful and grateful that we were able to do that. Then when I look at the number, it's been about 842 properties thus far. Is that correct? So is so the ND date is that by Christmas? Is that I would sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we can't guarantee that, but we would hope by at least by the by Christmas I think we should have it quick. You guys just have done a phenomenal job. Thank you. That's all I have. Uh, anything under uh, anything else under new business? I have, I have none. The only thing I would say, and I had a conversation with Laura uh, yesterday, and I checked on the status of that um, litigation with the uh, city over the waterworks, mm -hmm. and there's a hearing coming up in January. I don't know the exact date, uh, but um, uh, 15th, January 15th. Um, there, the trial is proceeding on. I think there's some discussion. There's some talk there may be settlement discussions between the county, the townships, the municipalities and in, in the city of Cincinnati. Um, but uh, I don't I think it's pretty tentative at this point. Um, so we'll have to see how that comes out. But so far there's been uh, I think a lot of testimony. I think uh, Mayor Cranley's one of the next witnesses and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, we needed to do something or else yeah. they could just arbitrarily raise Absolutely. it whenever they, right. every Absolutely. time it came up, they could just raise it to whatever they wanted. Exactly, exactly. Um, so that's just basically the updates of that litigation is ongoing. I was going to ask you about that, and I'm so glad. And I thought Cl I thought Mayor Cranley had already been subpoenaed, but it looks like he, he He's was... been subpoenaed, but I just don't think he's taken the stand. Okay. So... Um, Thoughts are there might be a little impetus for him to want to settle it. <laughs> I would think that's possibly so. <laughs> anyway. um, 
It appears that there is no one here that we need citizens participation this evening, so we will dispense with that. And um, I would ask for a motion to adjourn this portion of the meeting. However, the board will uh, go into executive session. Mr. Gilbert, that's for the purpose of? The consideration of compensation of public employees. Do we have a motion to adjourn this portion of the meeting and to move into executive session? And Mr. Burning will need a roll call. So moved. Second it. Mr. Burning? Aye. Ms. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Honolow? Aye. Meetings adjourned? Into executive session. Into executive session. Into executive session.